Are you ready for an adventure into a classic film from 1975? Get ready to explore the wild and chaotic world it presents. Directed by John Schlesinger, this movie delves into the gritty side of Hollywood in the 1930s. It's a story of shattered dreams and harsh realities set against the backdrop of a city on the edge of collapse. As you delve into the tale, you'll meet a diverse cast of characters, each struggling to survive in their own way. From hopeful actors to disillusioned artists, everyone is fighting for their place in a world where success is fleeting. Despite the bleakness, there are moments of beauty and optimism. The cinematography captures the glamour of Hollywood while exposing its darker side and the performances. They're incredibly moving, drawing you in with their authenticity and emotion. Do you have a special memory connected to this film? Perhaps a scene or moment that left a lasting impression on you? Share your stories in the comments below. Keep reading for more insights into this memorable movie. A thought-provoking exploration of Hollywood's darker side during the 1930s, The Day of the Locust unveils a seedy underbelly that contrasts sharply with the glamour often associated with the golden age of cinema. While not an enjoyable watch, the film delves into the grotesque and disconcerting aspects of the era. The narrative unfolds with a cast of characters, both central and peripheral, portraying a disturbing mosaic of human nature. The aspiring artist Todd Browning, played by Edward Atherton, becomes obsessively entangled with Faye Greener, a woman whose journey from rejecting well-meaning advances to succumbing to a series of unfortunate events mirrors the unsettling nature of the Hollywood landscape. Notably, Donald Sutherland's portrayal of Homer Simpson, a naive societal outcast, adds an ironic layer to the unfolding tragedy. Throughout the film, the viewer is compelled to witness a parade of characters resembling snakes in a barrel, creating an atmosphere far from edifying. The lack of a pivotal character to serve as a guide intensifies the feeling of loathing and revulsion, leaving the audience with a disturbing sense of Hollywood's underbelly. Despite the discomfort induced by deliberate repulsiveness and bleakness, the cast delivers solid performances, capturing the shabby existences of those labeled all the stars that never were. John Schlesinger's direction effectively portrays the decadence and ruin of vintage Hollywood, occasionally overdoing the bleakness but evoking undeniable and shocking power. In conclusion, The Day of the Locust offers a blacker-than-black portrait of Hollywood, immersing viewers in a world of decadence and ruin. While the film's intense bleakness may repel some, the undeniable power in its images resonates with the rarely seen dark side of Tinseltown. In the 1975 movie The Day of the Locust, connections to notable figures emerge among its cast. Donald Sutherland, a key actor, shares a distant relation to Howard Dean, the former governor of Vermont. Karen Black, another prominent figure in the film, is revealed to be the aunt of Eric Ziegler. Additionally, Richard Dysart, known for his role in the movie, previously collaborated with Elle, a law co-star Diana Muldor at New York's legendary Circle in the Square Theater during the 1960s. Muldor has praised Dysart, describing him as wonderful and a great character actor. Such connections enrich the background of the cast, adding layers to their involvement in the film. In the film, Geraldine Page plays a crucial role, drawing from her own family background. Donald Sutherland, a top actor, doesn't make his appearance until 42 minutes into the movie, creating suspense for eager viewers. Karen Black, another star in the film, went to the same high school as Hillary Clinton and Harrison Ford. These connections among the cast offer interesting insights into their lives beyond acting, adding depth to the viewing experience. These bits of trivia not only entertain, but also help us understand the characters and their motivations better. It's fascinating how these seemingly unrelated details come together to create a complete cinematic experience. These connections highlight the complex web of relationships in the world of filmmaking. The Day of the Locust goes beyond just being a movie. It's a story enriched by personal histories and professional collaborations, each contributing to its texture. This interplay of talent and circumstances is what makes cinema such an engaging art form. In a scene depicting Hollywood's dark allure, the character Todd Hackett and Faye Greener are on a date, while a tour guide narrates the tragic tale of actress Peg and Twistle, who took her life by jumping from the iconic Hollywood sign in 1932. During the film's climactic premiere, Movita, Marlon Brando's second wife, was slated to make a brief appearance as a VIP guest, but was ultimately cut from the final edit. 
William Atherton, known for his role in the 2011 Los Angeles production of Gigi, showcased his talents alongside co-star Millicent Martin, performing the beloved song Yes, I Remember It Well at the McCallum Theater's annual charity event in Palm Springs. It's fascinating how health can affect decisions in the movie industry. One actor, Burgess Meredith, had to say no to a role in Batman Returns because of his poor health. So, Paul Rubens got the chance instead. Another actor, Robert Pine, who was part of a fraternity, also played a part in the movie. His involvement added something special to the film. Donald Sutherland, known for his tall stature, did something interesting. He often slouched to match the height of other actors on screen. This shows how actors adjust to make their performances better. These stories give us a peek into how movies are made and how personal things can shape them. Each actor brings something different to their role. Together, they create a memorable experience for the audience. The Day of the Locust, with its cast members making interesting choices, shows us just how complex and artistic filmmaking can be. In the world of movies, The Day of the Locust is a film that connects the lives of important people both on and off the screen. For instance, Billy Barty, who had a role in the movie, also worked with former President George Bush to help pass a law called the Americans with Disabilities Act. Geraldine Page, another person in the film, made history at the Academy Awards. She was the first woman to be nominated for an Oscar seven times without winning. Finally, on her eighth nomination, she won the award. This record still holds today. Arlene Harris, who also contributed to the movie, considered it her last project in the film industry. It marked the end of her time in movies, showing how much she had done throughout her career. All these connections and achievements show how people in different roles can impact each other and leave a lasting impression in the movie world. In 1975, a movie brought together some notable actors, each with their own unique stories. One of them, recognized for his role in a film called The Day of the Locust, later won an Emmy Award for another performance. A decade after that, his son followed in his footsteps, earning an Emmy for his own role. Another actor in the movie holds a special distinction. She's ranked as the highest rated actress on a popular website based on connections through a famous trivia game. The third actor, also in the movie, has an interesting personal fact she was born on her father's birthday, adding a special layer to her life story. Together, these actors added depth to the film and made it culturally relevant. Their backgrounds and achievements showcase the talent that came together for this cinematic creation. In summary, the cast of the movie, featuring these actors, brought not only their acting skills, but also unique personal stories to the table. In the day of the locust, Robert Pine, previously contracted to Universal from May 1964 through April 1967, honed his skills in series like Run For Your Life and The Virginian. Donald Sutherland, known for his roles in various films, appeared alongside his son Kiefer Sutherland in three movies, including Max Dugan Returns, Forsaken, and A Time to Kill, where they portrayed enemies. William Castle, renowned for his interactive gimmicks and films, often appeared at the beginning of his movies to warn viewers about the impending terror. His promotional stunts, though hokey, consistently ensured profitable outcomes for his films. 